choose something that um is cute. <laughs> I would say <laughs> choose something cute like I don't know, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charmeleon. Is it right? Charmeleon? No, you are no. the super fan between the both of us. Hi everyone, I'm Jika and he is... Hi, I'm Ryan. And we are back, your pen. Noobs. Yes. We're back after some demand. Actually, we just want to start off with that. Um, we want to thank you because we launched, I believe, recording this on the th- on the first, and we launched on midnight of the of March thirty first. And well, looking at analytics, we're looking good, and we couldn't have done that without your support. Like it's. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you. This is a heart. Yeah, it's a heart. It's a heart. Yeah, that that's a heart. I mean, on YouTube, you can totally see that we're flipping hearts onto the screen right now. So we just want to really convey our utmost thanks for your engagement with this little thing that we got ourselves into. Oh my God, Chica. I, I cannot believe like people are asking me um, a lot of questions already. Um, I've got a lot of questions. And I felt like, oh my, God, oh my God, our podcast is supposed to be about us being noobs. But how can I feel like <laughs> we're being asked a lot of questions already as if though we know a lot of things. So um, just a disclaimer that a lot of the things that we're going to talk about are based on our personal experience um, with given our limited knowledge. But we will do our best to share whatever we know so far as newbies, noobs for that matter. And then hopefully we get to enable you in the yeah. process. Exactly. Actually, we've been using the hashtags penabling, penabler, and penlightenment. And I think that's totally in line with a few or one of the main questions that people have been asking us over the past two days since launch. And that is, how do you start on this pen journey? And again, we're not experts. So all we can really offer right now are our stories and just teensy bits of advice. You can totally reject this advice or not believe what we have to say but each journey is different this is ours and we really just want to hashtag enable you toward hashtag enlightenment yeah but i do i do think a lot of us in our journey um with founded pens a lot of us actually watched a lot of videos on youtube as well listened to a bunch of podcasts um i remember you introduced me to jet pens Right, so we like, yeah. oh, have all these very comprehensive lists. So, um, some point maybe some of the things we do enumerate came from jet pens, um, but a lot of the things we're gonna talk about today are basically the pens that we actually used when we started our journey into becoming um, pen users, pen masters, <laughs> yeah, Pokemon. <laughs> pen. Yeah. Oh, you brought up the Pokemon reference. Yes. Okay. Pokemon reference. You have a starter Pokemon. Thus, everyone has a starter pen. And what is a starter pen, Ryan, according to you? Well, for me, a starter pen basically is a pen that you will use as you begin um, your journey with founder pens. Usually these are pens which are quite easy to use. Um, They are at some point affordable because you don't really want to invest on something that you're not really sure that you keep in the long run. So you want to start something small first to make sure that you get an understanding of your preference, your taste, uh, when it comes to design, nibs, which we discussed yeah. um, in the previous um, episode. And I think in a short while, we'll mention a little bit about the body and the mechanism. So I yeah. think those are nice to consider when you choose a pen. That's true. So what was your starter pen? I mean, you're not Pokemon. I was going to say Pokemon. I mean, what was your starter pen? Um, My starter pen, um, which I think I mentioned in the first episode, was the um, Twisby. It's a Twisby Echo um, white rose gold. So yeah, yeah, this one. This pen was my, my starter pen. Um, which was weirdly not supposed not it's not usually the starter pen people get. Usually they get um, a pilot Kakuno, um, mm, Metropolitan also pilot Metropolitan, Metropolitan. or a uh, platinum uh, placier placier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, those are totally valid starter pens. Um, mm-hmm. 
Oddly enough, though, I've had so much experience where people started out with Twizz Beatles. So, hmm. Again, I said this last episode, I kind of judged people. But again, I need to remind everyone I own one. I'm going to yeah. own one soon. And I'm going to own another one eventually. There is a new release, um, Twizz B. Draco, I believe. And could be optioning that one. Not sure, not yet. But that's to advance. Starter pens. Oh. So, what, what what were the characteristics of your Twisby Eco again? Okay, so the Twisby Eco, um, honestly, when I bought it, I was like, I don't even know how to use it. I just watched <laughs> a bunch of videos, people, <laughs> and people like talking about how, oh, Twisby Eco, it's so pretty. So I'm like, okay, it looks pretty. Um, I think it would cost around um, one thousand five hundred pesos. So that's in peso. Dollars, sorry, I need to convert that, but yeah. You can move. Like 50, maybe 50. Is it 50? Yeah. 50 US dollars? Or is it too much? Again, we teach English. Google, thank you. Thank you in advance to everyone who's going to Google this. But yeah, I was just really wondering why the Twisby be eco as your starter pen, as opposed to, say, other pens like the ones that you mentioned. Okay, so before I answer that, <laughs> 30 around $30. So that's around $30. So yeah, I googled it just to make sure that everyone <laughs> knows how much it costs. Okay, so it's around um around $30, 35. It depends where you buy the pen. Um so I started with a Twisby because one I think this was the time when this specific model, the Eco White Rose Gold was released mm-hmm. and I thought the other pens, the platinum lacier, um, looks a bit plasticky. Mm. And the Metropolitan, Pilot Metropolitan, um, I couldn't find it on Scribe. So as a newbie, then people were telling me, oh, buy, buy from Scribe, buy from Scribe. Then some also told me, oh, you can check out everything calligraphy. They yeah. have it also there. But yeah, because I was a newbie then, I was like, oh, I'll just stick to one website first. Maybe I'll just go to Scribe since um, they've been, um, I've been seeing their posts on my IG feed. So it kind of pushed me <laughs> to buying. And then of course, you and the other people using pens, uh, founding pens, told me, oh, Scribe is the best way to, to buy, to yep. buy a pen. So I'm like, okay. So there. I chose this pen specifically um, because of the filling mechanism or, yeah. Hmm. Basically, how you put a, the ink. So I've watched a lot of videos prior to buying this. And when I actually got it in my hands, I unboxed it while watching a video <laughs> of someone unboxing their pen as well <laughs> and filling it up because I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know how to use this. No boots, like, no boots. What am I going to do with the grease? Do I have to put it there now? So yeah, one of the things I did learn... Um, when I first got my pen was the concept of flushing. So mm. when you got a pen, when you get a pen, the first thing you need to do is to actually flush it, like fill it up with water and then flush the water so that it pretty much cleans the pen and removes some of the, I don't know, debris or particles that may have been stuck there in the pen uh, when it was manufactured. So yeah. How about for you, Jika? Uh... It wasn't anything branded. It was an, it wasn't anything branded at all. So um I remember just going on Shopee. Shopee in the Philippines is like Amazon. Um, I think or eBay. Um, so I can't even say if what my first pen that what that I I bought on my own um was authentic. I believe it was a wing song number, number, number. <laughs> I don't remember. But um, so since that wasn't I still don't think it's authentic. I remember going to the Manila Pen Show, I believe in 2017. It was conducted in the Mall of Asia. Um, SMX? Yeah, SMX, that hall. And then it was this tiny, tiny place. It was so amazing because like, I was totally new to it. And then when I go in, it's tiny. Everyone's crammed in. And then suddenly there's like a 25,000 peso pen right there, right beside a 500 peso pen. And I couldn't understand what was going on, but I knew that I couldn't go there um, coming out looking like I didn't know what I was doing. 
So, <laughs> utter noob, noob moves. Um, I went to one of the stalls and looked for um, a wing song. Um, because I did have a, what I believe to be a fake wing song at that time. So I looked for a wing song. This is a black 698. It's semi, it's semi, it's semi transparent, making it translucent. Word choice. But yeah, um, I got this. It's a steel nibbed one. They say that wing song, song nibs are comparable to pilot nibs in terms of smoothness. Um, this one, I believe, is an EF, and I got it because of incapacity. Um, very much like the Twisby Eco, I think the, I would argue, actually, that the Wingsong 698 is somewhat of a copycat of Twisby's design, but you got yours, I got mine, we teach, we check, the incapacity. <laughs> the incapacity is so practical for us. So... That was also a driving force. It wasn't too expensive. I got mine for like, I think, am I tempted to say six, nine, eight pesos? No, not really. But um, I think I got this for 500. Yeah. And I've been happy with it ever since. Still writes really well. I still check papers with it. And it's always been so dependable. The starter pen doesn't have to be expensive um, to be good. It doesn't have to be branded to be good it doesn't have to be like big branded like a sailor or a platinum um to be good it just has to work for you and for a long time i think like three months this wing song okay maybe three months isn't so long <laughs> but yeah, for quite a while this wing song was doing me great you're doing great i'm okay. sorry i'm taking my time to pet my pen yeah mm. i'm never letting you go Okay, so yeah, speaking of um, starter pens, I just remembered, contrary, contrary to what we've been saying, that you got to buy a starter pen that's kind of affordable. Mm -hmm. I kind of reflected on why I bought this pen. <clears throat> actually, I realized it's not 1500 or 800 It's actually 2 8 because it's a special edition because it's yeah, rose gold. gold. <clears throat> reflecting on it now, the reason why I bought this because I thought that if I buy something I like and it's nice, I won't force myself to buy more stuff later <laughs> on. But oops, wrong notion. One year <laughs> later, here we are with a podcast about it. Yes. Yeah. Um, what else? I know I was going to say something about my pen as well. Wait, I'm trying to recollect. Um, the other thing why I got the pen was because of the mechanism. Um, one, it has great ink capacity and often pens with great capacity have a vacuum or a piston filling mm -hmm. mechanism. Um, it's like when you have a syringe or an injection and then some pens have you pull from the end like an actual syringe and the ones that we have, my Wingsong and Ryan's Twisby has us turn the butt is there a technical term for that, for the butt of the pen? Um, I don't know, at the end of the pen or like the knob? I don't know, I just call it a knob. Yeah, I call it the butt. But okay, we're going to turn the butt of the pen and then it's attached to like a plunger that just draws ink in. So um, usually when you go higher up in price, um, you get converters or you get... Um, what do you call these? Cartridges. And that's not necessarily environmentally friendly. Um, the incapacity is low. And, well, for practical usage, yeah, the piston filler is great. Yeah, the piston filler is great. But then again, um, there are also some starter pens that start off, um, basically, they don't have this kind of mechanism, but they do, um, they can come with a converter or it comes with a cartridge when you buy it, like the platinum place here. So yeah. That pen comes with a converter. And yeah, I do remember I acquired uh, two platinum place years. That was in June. <laughs> so I got this in May. I was like, oh, one more pens. Um, maybe I'll get something that's a starter pen. So I got up the platinum place here and they were so smooth, I tell you. They were so buttery smooth. I was so impressed with how smooth they were. Um, 
they're actually very good starter pens because it will make you appreciate uh, fountain pens without, um, of course, spending so much money. Mm -hmm. and it has a pretty nice design. I, I have to I have to give you that. Initially, I thought, oh, kind of cheap looking, but once you get the pen, um, sometimes maybe the photos don't do justice. Like that's true. The, photos, the, the colors don't gleam as well, especially the new limited edition placiers. They yeah. look like fruit in their yeah. ombre style. They're so beautiful. Okay. Yeah. There, place here, something to consider. Um, I can't really speak much about the pilot Kakuno. Maybe I think Jika, you you got you got a Kakuno. Kakuno I don't but... have one. I don't have one. I don't have a platinum place here. I don't have a pilot Metropolitan. I don't have a Twisby at the start. But yeah, um, I've heard a lot of good things for from our other teacher pen friends. So maybe once the pandemic is over, our memories can be refreshed when we take their pens on a ride. <laughs> I guess. Um, maybe moving forward, there are other things that you might want to consider. So we've talked about a few brands. Um, starter pens are dependent on use. I said a while ago that we chose ours because of aesthetics, mechanisms, and capacity. Um, and I just realize it now. Personally, I like a weighty pen. That's also probably why I didn't invest early in a Metropolitan, regardless of how pretty it was. I didn't invest in a Kakuno um, in a place here because they tend to be really light on your hand. And when you're writing for an extended period of time, you, well, personally, I like feeling the weight um, because I'm a very, I hold on to my pens very, what do you call that? Rigidly? strongly with force and I, I was always afraid because these pens are either plastic or worse aluminum I, I always felt like I deformed the pen with the amount of force that I'd put on it um yeah weights weights also something that you might want to consider there are actually like reddit posts or fountain pen network posts about the balance of a pen when it's posted or when the cap is on its butt Okay. or when it's unposted there's something about like certain mecha again i guess we're going back to the discussion about mechanisms also like there's also discussion about how closely to the nib you write and how that affect affect how that affects just how weighty you feel the pen is whether or not it's balanced and that can actually help you write for longer or it can hinder you from writing for a long amount of time Looks like you <laughs> are being all nerdy already. About I am. I am. Stop me. So yeah, um, basically those who've been asking about um, starter pens, like a starter Pokemon choose something that um, is cute, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> choose something cute, like, I don't know, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charmeleon. Is it right? Charmeleon? No, you are no. the super fan between the both of us. No, it's not Charmeleon. It's the second one. It's so Charmander. Charmander. Oh. It's their anniversary this year. You can't do this to them. Sorry, because you know, you know how Pokemon are like, Charizard, Charizard, Charizard. <laughs> get Charmander. Yeah, the Charmander. And speaking of, I forgot, I forgot to mention this. One starter pen that has proven to be consistent, at least in the Western Hemisphere, Lamy. 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 Yeah. Lamy Safaris, Lamy uh, ALs, they're really dependable. And if you have a problem adjusting to the grip, because there is a 45 degree angle that should be aligned with your paper. Again, I'm getting technical. I'm sorry. If Ryan says that, get a cute. If Ryan says you should get a cute pen, I would say get an ergonomic pen or a practical one. Um, so it's really up to you. Are you a Ryan or are you a Jika? <laughs> The point I'm really trying to make is that Lamy pens have this part of the nib that's actually shaped into a triangle so mm -hmm. that you can rest your thumb and your pointer finger on it properly so that no fail, you will get the correct angle for when you put that nib on the paper and it'll be a great experience. From what I've heard, that's how they start um, their students in the Western Hemisphere um, in school writing with fountain pens. So, in yeah. German, it's what they use. Yeah, I actually, I had a Lamy um, Safari, it's charcoal, 
Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I did not understand yet nibs that time. So yeah, noob. Like, <laughs> oh, I'll just get everything in medium. It's like, lo and behold, look at the lami in medium. So thick, like a broad. <laughs> So like oh no this this cannot be my everyday pen um i cannot use this for everyday use like you know signing all of these different forms when you're outside um sadly in manila that's what we do you know but yeah anyways <laughs> so there every time i do that i get to see my, my my the ink bleeding on the paper and it was like oh no it's not legible anymore but mm-hmm. yes i've had an experience with lamy it's actually quite good probably My only problem is that I cannot, no matter how hard I try to fix my, I don't know, the position of my hand when holding a pen, I cannot do it anymore. It does not complement with the way you hold the lami. So, yeah, yeah, some people just have a special way of holding the pen. Yeah. Oh, Twisby has that mechanism as well, right? On the nib. It's, it's kind of triangular. Am I right? Yeah. 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 But, yeah, this is how I hold my pen. That's why it does not complement with the lami. It, that's like a straight 90 degree angle. Yeah, this is how I hold my pen. Same. Yeah, so I can't do the. I think for some, this is how they hold it, right? Like, like this. I hold mine like this. Is, is it the same? Yeah, I think it's the same. Yeah, I don't hold it like that. Sadly, my middle finger needs to be part of the equation. So it kind of is quite inconvenient if you use a pen that has um, a kind of triangle similar to the safari. That's why it didn't work well for me. Because no matter how, how, how hard I try, yeah, this has exactly... It's like this. And yes. then the Lamy and the Twisby triangle makes you hold it like this. Yes. So I guess well, people, you got to go to YouTube to see what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but the Lamy, uh, the, the Twisby isn't so... It's not as imposing, the triangles. They're not as imposing as the, um, the Lamy. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I get that. So yeah, I mean, works for me. It worked for me and my writing angle is pretty good, but it also might not work for you. These things are really just incorporated into pens to facilitate a kind of writing experience, especially for people starting out with fountain pens. So again, our word is not law. Our word is not um, sacred scripture. But yeah, um, if you're looking for a starter pen, There's lots of ways to go about it because we started very differently and ended up with almost very similar things. Yeah, sure. Lamy. Lamy. And it's Lamy. Yeah. Lamy, Lamy like, Twisby, Wingsong. Yeah. Oh. So there, there are a lot of choices. You just have to be, um, you just have to take into consideration the brand, probably the body. The mechanism, the nib, of course, um, which we've discussed in the previous um, episode. So maybe one tip would be if you have big handwriting, consider a medium nib mm-hmm. and above. But if you have small handwriting, you'll be frustrated with a medium. You'll be like, oh my God, no matter how hard I try, I cannot make my handwriting legible with a medium nib. So consider a fine or an extra fine nib. So yeah, those are just the things to consider, which I wish I knew when I was starting. <laughs> if not, um, I don't know if this will be the last thing that you guys might want to consider, but it's also, again, it comes down to use. Um, I mentioned it a while ago that we did a lot of checking. Now we do it digitally, so we don't get to use our pens as much. We actually have a friend. He prints out his papers and then <laughs> takes pictures after he checks them. That's how desperate we are to use our pens. Um, but it's, it can also come down to use. Not just handwriting, not just mechanisms, not just ink capacity. Um, but it depends what you're going to use your pen for. Um, Ryan especially uses pens to sign a lot of things. I don't have that. Um, so he wants a pen with weight. He wants a pen with gravitas <laughs> in that writing experience. Um, yeah. I don't particularly need that because I don't sign a lot of things. I prefer a lot of like work things to be done digitally as well. So. What would you use your pen for? If you're answering exams, because fountain pens in this in our country actually have a community in law schools. 
and in medical schools as well. So if you're using your fountain pen to write a lot, like answer essays I mean examinations, then maybe don't go with a really heavy pen. Go with one with high ink capacity. Um, if you are a college student who likes taking casual notes and likes changing colors, maybe go for a smaller pen with smaller ink capacity so you can change your ink in and out. It, these things really might influence what your starter pen could be. So that's where I'm coming from. That's Are true. we done? Are we done? <laughs> we're done for that one. I think we're done with this episode. Wow, that was really quick. Ah, what a feeling. <laughs> it's okay. We'll have the next episode. We're going to talk about something lengthier. <laughs> I can feel. I can feel it as well. <laughs> so, okay. thanks for watching or rather listening or watching whether on YouTube or on Spotify if you're listening. Or what else what else are is the other Okay. Podcast? Okay, let's go ahead with updates about our media. Okay, so, so far, guys, um, we are on Spotify, we are on YouTube, we are on Anchor. Um, Google Podcasts, I think, by the time that this episode is out, Google Podcasts will be working. Currently, people have accessed us, oddly enough, and I didn't know this, on, what's that platform? On, I'm looking at the internet. Um, they also found us on Pocket Casts and Overcast. Because when I was when I was signing us up for distribution, I just said, "Sign us up for everything." <laughs> oh. Oh. Sign us up for everything. I have no idea how to do it individually. So yeah, um, by the time this episode is out, we'll be in all major, um, all major podcast um, listening platforms. Maybe even and hopefully even Apple Pod. So you will not have a scarcity of pen news episodes. You have no excuse to not find us. So please do find us. And hopefully by the time you get to episode four, you're listening to us while planning, journaling, or doing your thing with your starter pen. <laughs>